Welcome back to my channel. Today we'll be talking about reactions of uh, hydrocarbons and we test for saturated and non saturated hydrocarbons. Organic chemistry is the study of hydrocarbons and their derivatives, chemically distinguished by functional groups. And functional group is a distinctive, is a chemical distinctive unit, you know, that detects how an organic compound behaves or functions. And basically, there are uh, several types of functional groups, but also um, organic compounds are kind of classified, you know, into three. Here we have uh, our canes. We have our alkanes, then we have our alkynes. And so these ones are kind of classification of hydrocarbons. And most of the times, functional groups also uh, bonds of these group classes of hydrocarbons affect the way uh, they act as functional groups, the bonds that exist between the carbons of these, you know, uh, these hydrocarbons. They act most times as functional groups, okay? And also, like arcane has a single bond, arcane has double bond, and uh, arcanes have triple bond. Let's take, for example, arcane. Arcane, let's say that you have CH4 as an arcane. And the structure formula for this CH4 is C slash Now this compound is classified as a saturated carbon because the number of bonds that a carbon atom can have is four, maximum of four. And this compound, as you can see, is already saturated. It has that it has completed its bond that is required for this carbon atom. And so uh, our case compound found in this group can only undergo substitutional reaction you know now when we react this with two uh with two bromine with two bromine what happened is that these two moles of uh, bromine we substitute uh the hydrogen found in this carbon atom then we have uh c b r b r h h this becomes our product. Okay, this is substitutional reaction. And so, um, groups of these alkanes do not undergo any other reaction apart from substitutional reaction. And most times, it is unreactive. And so, it has formed, you can see, uh, this is dibromo, dibromo methane. That's the name of this compound. Now, when coming to alkynes, alkynes are double bonded. And because they are double bonded, they are kind of reactive, okay? They are kind of reactive and they can also undergo additional reaction and substitutional reaction. So coming to this group of uh, hydrocarbons, they are double bonded. And because they are double bonded, they, are, they can undergo additional reaction. Now let's take for instance, um, let's take for instance this has a general formula of Cn H2 N plus 2. Okay, now this has a general formula of Cn H2 N. You know, so I'm just trying to brief you on how we arrive at, at this, uh, this, these structures. Now, let's say when N is equal to 2 for this group of compounds, now this becomes C2 H2 4. Now, this is our 18. 18. Now, if we draw the chemical structure of this compound now, you will be getting something like this. Now, if we perform a substitutional reaction with 2 bromine, what happens here is that this, this bromine, this uh, two molecules of bromine, will also attach themselves, replacing the hydrogen, you know. Uh, hydrogen atom found in this compound. Now what we are going to get is C, double bond C, 
it can be trans, it can be trans, this is trans. Okay, now this is for substitutional reaction. Now when it comes to uh, additional reaction, additional reaction, you can also undergo additional reaction. Why by the bonds, the double bond here, that is, you know, kind of bonded these two carbon atoms, we have to break, you know, in order to, you know, uh, to be saturated. So it breaks down to form this group of car carbon hydrocarbons. What do I mean by that? Now, if we should react this as an additional reaction, what happens here is this, that this double bond here will break off Give me space for additional atoms to come in. So this is what we have. This becomes, let's say it's one, two. This becomes one, two dibromo uh, 18. One, two dibromo 18. One, two dibromo. Uh, it's in. It breaks from single bond, double bond back to single bond. So from unsaturated down to saturated compound. Now, is this also the same thing that is equivalent to alkynes? Now, alkynes undergo additional reaction, they also undergo substitutional reaction. So uh, they break down from triple bond to single bond, then from single bond. From, from triple bond to double bond, from double bond to single bond. That's how they break, you know, their bonds break. Okay, but this in this experiment, basically we'll be testing for, you know, this unsaturated compound. And we'll be testing for, sorry, this is saturated, a single bond. And unsaturated, uh, hydrocarbons. So we're working majorly with this group of, you know, um, these two groups of hydrocarbons. Okay, and we'll be using um, Bayer's test and sulfuric acid test. This is the procedure on how you will carry out this experiment in the lab. Uh, as this experiment is consigned, you will be given two samples. And these samples are in liquid form actually. One is saturated, the other one is unsaturated. So you have sample A and sample B. So you really want to, from the experiment, tell us which one is saturated and which one is unsaturated. So for sample A, you get a clean test tube. After getting a clean test tube, you add seven drops of sample A. Then after adding seven drops of sample A, you add one mil of ethanol. This ethanol will be kind of 95 to 99% pure, uh, pure. Then after adding, you know, your ethanol, you shake for a few seconds. Then you add two drops of uh, manganese. You know, permanganate stains. So you see, you still have to be careful while working with permanganate because it can stain any of your clothes, even your palm. So you just have to be careful with it. Then after adding a two drops of permanganate, you shake, for sample A, you shake vigorously. Okay, you shake vigorously for about five minutes. And you'll be expecting something like, um, you'll be expecting something like, um, something like pink to brown color. Pink to brown color. Okay, so once you shake vigorously, you observe and record your observation. Then you repeat the procedure using you know, sulfuric acid in step five. Step five is saying two drops. So if you're repeating this procedure in the next the, the next test tube, you are going to use sulfuric acid instead of uh, permanganate. I hope this is clear. So you repeat this procedure using uh, permanganate and sulfuric acid. That's why you have two test tubes. So one of the test tubes will be for permanganate, the other test tube will be for sulfuric acid. But everything is the same, just change your reagent from permanganate to sulfuric acid. Now for step two, uh, for sample B, you also get a clean test tube, 
you add seven drops of sample B, you add one ml of ethanol, you shake for a few seconds, then you add two drops of permanganate, and then after that you observe and record the observation and also the inference. Then you repeat the procedure also using sulfuric acid in step five above. And so let's head down to how you're going to present your results. So this is how you're going to present your results or how your results will look like. You have to form a table. This table will have a column of sample, column of test, observation, and inference. Now your sample column, you're working with two samples here, right? Sample A. You know, so your test, you have to include everything you, you use in your in, in testing your sample. Like here, you have seven drops of sample A, one plus one million of ethanol, plus two drops of permanganate. What did you observe? Maybe pink color solution, white color solution, or whatsoever. Then write your inference. I'm going to give you the key on how what you're going to look out for. Now, either saturated solution or unsaturated solution. Now, uh, you are performing this with sulfuric acid also. Now, this is for sulfuric acid, 7 drops of sample A plus 1 ml of ethanol plus 2 drops of sulfuric acid. What did you observe? Let's say clear colorless solution. Is that the, your inference, is it a saturated solution or unsaturated solution? You present your results. Okay, then this is for sample B, just a, the same way you presented your sample A. And you have to state all the reagents, all the parameters, or everything you used in testing each of these samples. Let's, let me give you the key on how to decode or know if a compound is saturated or unsaturated. And so this is how you're going to present, and uh, this is the key that will help you to interpret your experiment. Now when you see a white and pink layers of solution, when you see two layers of solvent with pink color at the bottom of your test tube, if you observe two immiscible solvents or a solution with a ring, a ring-like solvent or a ring-like layer in your test tube, something like a ring in the solution, you know that that solvent or that sample is saturated now when you see a clear pink solution you see a color range from pink to brown so this color range depends on the time you you keep your test tube or your your this thing uh, your your sample with all the have mixed together so that's why you you will observe a color change to start changing from gradually from pink to brown maybe in the space of five to ten minutes when you see a clear white solution, you know that that compound or that sample is, is unsaturated. Now, this case is for permanganate and also for sulfuric acid. Thank you for watching. And if this is your first time of coming across uh, my video or my page, do subscribe, comment, and, uh, and share. Thank you.